In this demonstration, you will learn how to create queries and plots within Insight. Queries are the XY pair of information. Think of these as being two columns of data in a spreadsheet application. One column will be plotted around the X axis and the other around the Y axis. Plots are the actual graphs that make up the data within both of your columns. Therefore, the two are separate. You can have multiple queries on a single plotter. You can also have one query specified in different plotters. Therefore, there is a separation between both queries and plotters. Queries are essentially the XY data, and plotters are the graphs of that specific data. So attributes for the graph are attributed to the plotter, and attributes tied into the actual data values are tied to the query. There are quite a few different types of queries. The Graph Query button here will bring you to a dialog where you can choose the different types of samples. These are generally the different types of samples you can choose from, such as at line tool over distance, at 1D part over distance, which are both pretty common, and at spline over distance. The other samples ending with over time will be individual locations over time. These will be used if you are aware of the node or element ID or an IJK or XYZ location. IJK is a structured set in the sense that it is at a structured location within the domain. Therefore, you need to have a structured domain for this. XYZ is more a location monitor over time. There is a minimum and maximum over time. This would be for the part selected. It will query the min or max every variable and then display that over time. These all have the x-axis as being time. By a scalar value is more of a scatter plot. It would have two independent variables. By constant on part sweep would take a part, compute a constant on that part, and move that part through its range of motion. That range of motion could be an XYZ clip. It could also be a plane or an isosurface value. By operating on existing queries, takes queries you already have and either adds them together or calculates some basic math between them. Read from an external file would read data in from an XY file. It's a specific format that Insight has to read an XY data straight from the disk without any modification. This is simply a specified file format within Insight. Beyond these, under the user-defined tools, you can read in data under the File Export dropdown. You will see an option for Query Import, which will allow you to open a CSV file in an editor of your choice and specify within the editor which of the columns of data will be the XY data, title, and so forth. This is a generic way of reading in a standard CSV file, tab, or whitespace delimited file. This allows you to specify what you will read from within that file. It may be manual, but it does allow a graphical interface into reading column-based data. When using a right-click, you will see a couple of shortcuts to these. Start by taking a clip through the fluid and clip in the X direction. Turn the part off and color by velocity by dragging the velocity variable to the newly created part. Now clip this part in the Y direction. Here is your Y direction clip you just created with a 1D part. Right-click the clip and select Query Line Part. This is identical to going up here and selecting 1D part over distance under the sample dropdown. It already knows it is a 1D part, therefore it automatically filters and gives you this option. Specify the variable you want to query, in this case select Velocity. In the right-click menu, these are all defaulted out. If you were to use the icon here and go through this direct method, you can specify how you want to have the distance variable written. There are many defaults chosen for you when using the right-click option, which you can adjust. Currently, it is showing you distance. It is the distance relative to this node. There will be a dot that will be displayed. That is the zero distance value shown on your graph. All other values are plotted relative to that. That node may move left or right, depending on what is the minimum first location you had chosen. Say you want to know the z-coordinate. You can double-click the query here to get back to the main dialog, or you could have initially specified it earlier. You can specify the distance here, and you can override it to be z from origin, for example. It is now plotting relative to the z-origin. You can now see the new dot location, and here is the location indicated by the dot as your starting point. Staying with queries for a moment, you can control how the query is displayed. 
the title for it, and which axis that query is plotted on. This is particularly important if you start to plot more than several quantities on a graph. Nsight will try to put common values on the left-hand side and have only one y-axis. However, if it doesn't know it is the same value, it will attempt to put it on the y2 axis. You may want to override that and put it on the left axis. That is where you will use the plot on plotter's y-axis and set it back to the left. This query is always plotted on the left side of whatever plotter it is being plotted on. The other thing that you can do to the data here is you can scale and offset the x to the y. Moving or shifting can be done with the values presented here. The controls below control the color, line width, and other pertinent options. The marker attributes is putting a marker on. This is the marker that is going on and off. This is defaulted on. Here is that marker that is indicating where we are in the graph. If you then move to the plotter, this vertical line here is indicating where that marker is. You could actually mouse over this vertical line and drag left or right and let go. That will show you the marker's location. You can see the values registered off from the velocity here. This concludes part one on how to create queries and plots within Insight.